Yes, sir. What's your name? My name is Oren. Hey, Oren. Um, my question is, how do you reconcile the idea of a completely sovereign God and the idea of man's responsibility and free will? Predestination, free will? Or just a sovereign God in control of everything and then not free will and responsibility? Yeah, well, we're not predestined to talk about that tonight. I'm sorry. <laughs> The way it is, the way it goes, what can I say? All right, obviously we could talk about this for centuries, and, and Christians have been arguing about it over for centuries. But let me just give you one um, analogy that may help. Because a lot of people think if God knows everything, that somehow we don't have free will, right? Uh, let's just say you love, um, you love football, and uh, one day, one uh, Saturday, you love college football, one Saturday you um, uh, are away from the TV, you can't watch the games, and you want to come home, you record them, you DVR them, and you want to come home and watch those games when you get home that late that Saturday night. But on the way home, your friend texts you the score, and you go, Pfft. I didn't want to know the score, I wanted to watch it as if it were live. But you go anyway and you elect to watch one of the games, right? You turn the game on, you know what's going to happen. But because you know what's going to happen, does that mean that the players on the field don't have free will? No, they're still freely doing what they're doing, right? In, in, in an analogous way, God, who's outside of time, knows what we're going to do before we do it, but that doesn't mean he's causing us directly to do it. In a sense, God causes us, when he elects to create this universe, he elects the outcome. But he always knew you would believe freely, and he always knew someone like Richard Dawkins, an atheist, wouldn't believe freely. He doesn't cause Richard Dawkins not to believe. He doesn't cause you to believe. His Holy Spirit comes to you and you accept. Richard Dawkins, the Holy Spirit came to him and he rejected. So we have free will to allow us to love. And God still knows what we're going to do, but he doesn't cause us to do it. Because if the scriptures are true, and of course I think they are, God says, I want everyone to be saved. Well, if God wants everyone to be saved, and we don't have free will, then why isn't everyone saved? Right? The reason some aren't saved is because they don't want God. So they reject Him. All right? Thanks, Orrin. By the way, there's a book that my co-author wrote called Chosen But Free. His name is Norman Geisler, G-E-I-S-L-E-R. If you want to go deeper, you're predestined to read that book.